French country style. What's it all about? You asked, I responded, Bonjour and welcome to the channel. We're gonna talk all about French country interior design today and I could not be more excited. I'm gonna show you how to decorate your home in this beautiful rustic style inspired by Provence, evocative of the beautiful Southern France countryside. We'll explore things like using natural materials, neutral colors, distressed furnishings, those rustic details that we all love, and bringing the outdoors in. This design style is all about having a balance of refinement and rustic charm. So if you're ready to create a cozy and relaxed space, that's French. Let's get started. What I love about this design style is its ability to maintain a very sophisticated and polished aesthetic while having the comforting aspects of rustic design. So it really accomplishes so much in one design style. French country interior design focuses on creating a cozy and relaxed, spacious space that's inspired by France. Not just any part of France, but the South, you know, like, Nice. Nice is very nice, by the way, if you haven't been. We all know how fancy France can be, and there is some fanciness here, but I wouldn't call this design style pompous or egotistical or anything. It's very much a really cool fusion of relaxed and refined. So let's start by talking a few of the key elements here while I put up some examples on the screen for you magically. The first one is natural and earthy materials. So of course we have wood, wood's a huge one, but also things like stone and brick are commonly used for flooring and sometimes walls, but also decorative accents. Linen, and cotton, more of those natural fibers can sometimes make an appearance in the form of upholstery and rugs window treatments and even bedding, rattan, jute, even a bit of hyacinth sometimes. Using natural materials just really helps create a casual and inviting space. So that's where that rustic aspect really, really comes in. Also in terms of colors, I think that there tends to be a bit of a neutral sort of feel. I saw someone describe them as sun-drenched colors, which is kind of a really cool way of putting it. Essentially colors that aren't extremely vibrant and punchy, like the pink back here, more of a soft, desaturated, dusty sort of aesthetic. Colors that are really inspired by the French landscape, which includes shades of beige, cream, olive, sage green, I, I guess you can put in there as well. A little bit of terracotta, maybe some mustard yellow. And I think the walls, generally speaking, aren't going to be very vibrant at all. I see a lot of white walls in this design style, or at least, off-white neutrals, which is great if you do have those exposed wood beams because the contrast between the white and the wood will be that much more prominent, which is great because you want to accentuate those beautiful architectural features. And if it's not architectural and you kind of fake it and just put wood up there, that's cool too. I think there is a reliance on those neutral colors that do lean a little bit warmer with some cooler accents. The main reason being it's creating a bright and airy space that feels like you're not underground. You're actually almost like you're outside. It has that really playful, fun, easygoing feeling to it. So paint colors aside, let's talk about furniture. So some of you may already have pieces of furniture that really suit the style. So anything that looks especially worn, <laughs> has a really rustic handcrafted feel. You know, antiques are a great one, especially like antique beds or bedroom furniture is a big one. Big old farmhouse tables. You can go with wrought iron beds instead of wood as well. Vintage sin, vintage sin, vintage sin, vintage sin. <laughs> Vintage chandeliers, man, that's a hard word to say. Don't be shy to put a slip cover over your sofa because that could work too. And then of course your armoires and dressers, anything that looks distressed. So this could just be from age. So they just look more and more rustic as time goes on, or you can kind of fake it as well and do a faux finish. You can use milk paints and things like that. You can give it a bit of a crackled finish too. All that works really nicely. And I think the main purpose of all these vintage feeling furnishings is it helps create a relaxed and most importantly, a lived in space. So it doesn't feel like you just bought all these things from your big box store. These have been passed down, collected, curated. They're made for your space. That's kind of the idea here. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but architectural details that are rustic feeling. So the wood beams is the biggest one, but not just that. You can have stone fireplaces, 
colonial style arched doorways, wooden shutters, all those architectural elements that maybe you already have really add some charm and texture to the overall interior look. And then going from furniture to maybe smaller accessories, you can really decorate a ton. Feel free to go wild with your decorating. So things like fresh lavender or dried lavender, olive branches, baskets made out of rattan, rustic pottery, vintage inspired linens. And of course you can get some of those like framed botanical prints. Those are always fun too. Anything to help to bring in a bit of a country feel, like a rustic countryside, sort of natural kind of vibe. That's really big. And if you're blessed with big windows and a beautiful view, opening onto a patio, your garden, your courtyard, your view of the countryside, anything like that that can bring the outdoors in visually is a huge plus. And it's something that I wish I had. So if you don't, not a huge deal breaker. So let's start with five paint colors that really evoke the French country interior design style to me. Bleu de la bleu de blue blah bleh. Again, you're, you're not speaking French! These are all Benjamin Moore colors, but hopefully if you use another company other than Benjamin Moore, you can just find something similar and it'll give you a similar effect. The first one being Swiss coffee. So I started with a white here. It is an off-white really, but what I love about it is it has that touch of creamy warmth to it to really just brighten up the whole space that you use it in. It's light enough that it can be your trim color and of these five colors, it's probably optimal for the trim, but as a wall color, it's still great. It's one of my favorite warm whites to use in a home. And I think it will act as a beautiful starting point for you in your color palette. If you don't really need a ton of color in a space, but you want something as bright as possible without being obnoxious, this would be my choice. So this would be a great color to really contrast any other darker elements that maybe you already have incorporated in the form of architecture or furniture and accessories. So anything that's darker, even remotely darker, it's gonna be able to pop off of this wall color really, really well. If you're looking for another neutral that has a little more to it, a little darker, maybe go with Bleaker Beige. And this is a mid-tone color, also pretty warm, but kind of infused with a bit of gray as well. It just helps give it that sort of old timey feel, right? It's not too vibrant and bright. It doesn't look like it's freshly painted. It has that gray aspect that looks a bit faded, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's just gonna suit the things around it within the style because it is toned down at the end of the day. It is quite a bit darker than Swiss coffee, so don't think of them as comparable colors. They are definitely in two different categories. You have basically a white, not even an off-white really, and then a mid-tone. So big jump there, but the darker color could suit a lighter room better because you'll have all that natural light coming in to really bring it to life. And that's where it really shines. No pun intended. Our third color is another mid-tone, but definitely takes things into a different direction. I do not think this is an interior design style that needs to live and die by the neutrals, which is why I'm giving you Gossamer Blue as a third choice. So a little bit lighter than Bleaker Beige, but way more of a color, way more blue. I actually almost call it a toned down warm blue, if that makes sense. So it has like a touch of green in it that brings it into the warm side of things, which is good because that means it won't be a hard contrast with those two other warmer colors that you're starting with. I just find that blue mixed with anything brown leaning like wood, it always works really well for me. I love it. And this color is fairly light. It's not a very dominant color. It'll just give you that little complimentary flair that I think this palette really needs. And then next we have Equestrian Gray, which is the darkest color in this entire palette. So I picked Equestrian Gray just to show you that you don't need to lean into the light colors alone. You can venture down below mid-tone territory. I just wouldn't rely on it too heavily within your color palette. So use it in select spaces that dark colors would serve. Anywhere that you wanna feel a little more earthy and grounded, maybe areas that you don't want a ton of light bouncing off all over the place. And of course you can always use it in accent form on furniture and accessories, maybe for doing that distressed look on any dresser. This could be a good color to do that with because it'll still feel in line with maybe everything else you have, but it will contrast off of the lighter walls that you probably will have as well. But the color that really brings this whole thing together to me is a green. And it's not just any green, it was the former color of the year by Benjamin Moore back in 2015, I believe. It's called Guilford Green. 
It's absolutely beautiful, very warm and inviting, just brings this whole color palette to life. And we talked about it in this video right over here. One of my older color codes, actually. Back when it was called Color Code and not Color Quickie like it is now.